William Roberts, the fake Rick Ross. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, that what guy. about that guy, man? <laughs> Why is he a bad guy? Tell me, man. He seems like a sweet guy. What's wrong he, with him? He called me a rat. Oh, didn't I'm down on my love. You. Well, he didn't. He shouldn't have said that. I took your car, Mike, and and I drove it to the thing, and everybody recognized me, and I got a deal. But I'm gonna keep the car, and I ain't gonna get you nothing for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Evan Britton. And I'm Mike Tyson. Mike, we got a great one. Oh, uh, we have a sensational legendary guest, today. guest here. Yes. We got Freeway Rick Ross. Welcome, my brother. <laughs> How you Thank doing, you. Rick? Thank oh, you, Mike, man. I'm good, man. Great to have you here, man. Uh, great to be here, you know. Um, I don't know, man. It's crazy. Me and Mike came up at the same time. Like our runs yeah. was 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 almost yeah. parallel. I knew yeah. people that knew Rick and stuff. I knew girls that knew him and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we, we uh, um, I think we went to New York and watched him fight, like, it's, maybe his 12th fight or something like that. Wow, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Madison Square Garden. That's yep. when you know Madison you born. You can just go watch yeah, your yeah. up-and-coming rookie. <laughs> yeah. Check him out. That's crazy. Well, you right, know, man. my partner knew, man. My partner was like, man, this dude's going to be the next champ, man. Come on, let's wow. go. Let's go check him out. You know? now that's balling. You get, I'm go. He's the next champ. Let's just go check him out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? There's somebody that's yeah. in the sport that knows sports. That other people don't know nothing about. So let's go check this out. Yeah. 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 It was, well, it was crazy. I mean, good times. Yeah. You've walked a pretty unique and incredible path. Oh, uh, no doubt. No doubt. Um, it's 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 been a journey, you sort know? of mind boggling. Listen, but no very one, very mind boggling. Yeah, I mean, do you watching, ever see people that you were hassling with in the streets now? They have normal jobs, they're like, you know what I mean? I see a few. It's yeah, a few of they them. They made yeah. it. Yeah, oh yeah. God! I mean, went to jail. You know, did they ten, fifteen, twenty years, and and you know, and it was like I can't do it again. You know, I can't go that route. Uh, so so they squared up and, and and got a job, which is 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 a wise thing to do. You know, if if you if you can't be an entrepreneur, then you know, uh, get a job. <laughs> mm, yeah. I mean, but a job, is, you know, I just couldn't work a job. I, I, I got to be an entrepreneur. I, I got to be where I can go whenever I get ready, um, come yeah. when I get ready. You know, I got to be free. I feel that, man. For people who don't know your story, where do you start? Under a rock and find <laughs> out where they at. <laughs> we go under the rock. We dig the rock up and be like, hey, you come out of there. <laughs> it's time answer, to come to the dude. light. It's, it's time to come to the light. No, um, uh, you know, I started selling drugs as, as a 19 year old kid who, um, who all of his dreams had suddenly been taken away from him. Uh, my dream was to be a tennis player, you know, uh, was pretty good, you know. Probably could have got a scholarship. Yeah, Did you meet at the Arthur Ash? Uh, yeah, I met That's Ash. A trip. I, I met Ash. I've awesome. never met Arthur Ash. I have a tattoo of Arthur Ash. I never met. He came. Him. He came down to our high school. We really? we, we wow. had the best black high school. Two of Arthur Ash, man. I never <laughs> oh, met Arthur right? Ash. Yeah. We had the best high school tennis team in the country. Really? Yeah, we did. And, Amazing. Uh, Ash came down and, and, and gave us awards and well, not me because I I wasn't uh I was on JV at that time. I wasn't on the varsity team. Um, Gave gave awards and, and hit with the top three or four players, and it, it was an amazing day, man. I was like, "Oh, I know I'm in the right sport." <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I just I just took to it, man. I fell in love with it. Um, I, I didn't have anything else, you know. At that time, I couldn't read, I couldn't write. Uh, uh, basketball and football wasn't going to be the way because I was too little, you know, uh, and. Tennis was was perfect for me, so I, I I jumped in and I started putting my all into it. And uh, too bad at the end of the rainbow when it was time for me to graduate from high school, they found out I couldn't read or write, and they was mm. like, "Oh, well, you're not going to college. Mm. And you're you're a dummy." Mm. And uh, I was kind of crushed by it. Uh, found myself back in South Central Los Angeles, uh, in what in tennis we call no man's land. You know, where you're in a position on the court where uh, you really can't do anything, and you don't know what you're going to do. You know, you're just mm. trying to survive. And that's the position I was in. So, um, <sighs> to go to prison and and to get a life sentence without the possibility of parole, you know, it's like right now. Did you freak out right away? Did you say, hold on, let me just calm down. I know this is not the end. I, I, 
I, I knew Mike when I was going to do the crime mm-hmm. that I was looking at a life sentence. So when I was going through the process, it was kind of kind of shocking, but not not totally, because you know it's like you deserve this, you know you you earn this. So it was kind of shocking. The hardest part was the day that they actually gave it to me, and my mom uh, was in court, and and she broke down. Um, you know my mom too, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. And they done they she had dinner with you and everything. She was like, Oh Mike Tyson is so nice. <laughs> you told her you told her she could drive your car. That's what really? that was the highlight. Yeah, that was one of the highlights oh, of, of her life. Oh, that's oh, beautiful. Oh, Mike told me I could drive her car. He that's said, beautiful. Oh, Miss Frost, uh, you can drive my car if you want to <laughs> and you didn't even know it was my mom. He didn't even that's know it was my mom, stuff. right? That's just how that's just how uh, he was carrying it. So uh that was, you know, one of the highlights of her life is like, man she came to jail and told me. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, yeah. Bro. She came to jail and told me like, man, That's I was cool. with Mike Tyson in, in Cleveland. You was in Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. She was with a uh, uh, Turo, a, a boxer, a old That's boxer crazy. named Turo uh, from Cleveland. Um, and they, y'all was at a restaurant, and you was like, oh yeah, you can drive that car. <laughs> Probably at Lancers or somewhere. <laughs> that was the so hangout, funny. Lancers. So you know, it, it's crazy how how our paths how our, our paths cross in so many different ways, and. Um, you know, now that we sitting here and we talking and, and your kids playing your kid playing tennis, my kids play tennis, uh, you got the form, I'm trying to get a dispensary. Um I mean it's just so many things in common and, and uh, uh sports kinda get that to you too, you know, where you have that uh um I gotta win. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I don't wanna lose. Yeah. I wanna be a winner. Yeah. And and um that's the attitude that I have right now. That comes from my upbringing. You know, we watched our parents be losers and watch people in our neighborhood be losers, watch them, everybody just lose everything. We don't want to be that way. No. You watch the block talk about them and people talk about you and your name, your, your name is in the mud and shit. Yeah. And I think that that mentality is why uh, so many young black men sell drugs right now because they don't have no other outlet but they don't want to be a loser, you know, like, I ain't taking welfare, I don't want food stamps, and, you know, I can't stand in line for the government cheese, I'd rather sell drugs than Now listen, prison. Rick, listen, when I was in the streets, right, late 90s, 70s and stuff, this is, I guess, couldn't sell fucking drugs on the corner, I just couldn't sell the drugs or be in the house and wait, I had to take it. You know what I mean? I would take the drugs. I couldn't. I just couldn't be on the street selling it to people. So. You didn't have the patience. No way. How could you do it? You're amazing, brother. <laughs> How could you do it? Shit, I had to stay there all night. I'd be like, Wow, fuck. My thing fuck, was, bro. my thing was kind of like the way you work out, though, Mike. Yeah. You could do a thousand squats. I, I read yeah. in the paper one time they were saying Mike Tyson do a thousand squats yes. every day. A thousand, bro. Yes, bro. I was getting. I was an animal. That's why my whole squats. body is fucked up. I was yeah. an animal. So that's how I was about selling drugs. I can't even drugs. run now. I can't even run, do road work now. My body all fucked up. Hey, man, you know, you put it through the ringer. I was taught that the harder you train, the more you would yeah. achieve. Yeah. The harder you train, the more you break down. I was the same, man. That's what had me break down. Yeah. My, my whole body broke down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, people... Well, Rick, I, I really... Um, I watched your documentary last night, Freeway. Did you? Yeah, man. Because I wanted to just brush out. Hear all the politicians talking about him and stuff. It's just (laughs) mind blowing, man. And uh, I want to ask you a question. Just uh, and I know that you do a lot of speaking. You get out there. You know, you use the platform that you have to really spread some positive good in the world. We we have to. I mean, yeah. I mean, mean, when we all look at it, when, when we're gone. The, the one thing that anybody want people to say about him is that he was a good person. Yeah. You know, like uh, the deed that Mike did with my mom. Right. You know, right. Um, he don't even remember. Yeah. But she remembered. Yeah. You know, and, and, and those are the things that's going to count. You know, when you're no longer around, when you can't speak for yourself, when other people speak for you, you want people to say nice things about you. You know, like you go, and that's one of the reasons I stopped going to front rows because they go to the front row and they they sitting up there and they lying about this guy. Hmm. You know, the guy was a piece of shit, man. Hmm. The guy ain't helped nobody. He took from everybody he come in contact with, and and I don't want to be that person. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to be the person that people got to come in and, and make my family feel good and tell a bunch of lies about me. You know, I, I wanted to be where I actually helped people, you yeah. know, where I actually did good by other people. And, and I'm hoping that one day uh, I can do more good than I did bad with when I sold cocaine, you know, because yeah. I sold a lot of cocaine and I sold it to a lot of people. Uh, and I did that out of ignorance. You know, because I didn't really understand. I didn't understand what cocaine was. I was 19 years old, had never saw cocaine, had never read a book, had never hit a joint, had never drunk a beer. You know, I was one of like, like Mike was dedicated. I was dedicated to tennis. I was like, you know, I'm running five miles every other day doing wind sprints. And I'm like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be great. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I I was taught to stay away from that. Mm -hmm. So when I went into that lane, when I found myself selling drugs I didn't know what I was doing nothing you know I'm just listening to other people telling me what I should be doing and how I should be doing it and yeah well how do you feel having that perspective now you know I mean just how do you feel about you know being the spark of the crack epidemic in America not in any way other than you know being who you are now, you know, and seeing just the wreckage that it causes in the individuals. Well, well, I, I have no regrets. Yeah. You know, no regrets, only lessons. Yeah. You know, I learned some valuable lessons from it, uh, lessons that I wouldn't repeat, uh, but lessons that I hope other people can look at and make the right decision from, you know, so often, um, we don't have anybody that we can go to. You know, when when I started selling drugs, I didn't know nobody that had ever sold cocaine. Now I knew about the Nicky Bournes and 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 uh, the guys that sold heroin, and I wasn't going to sell heroin because I understood what heroin was. But when it came to cocaine, I didn't understand. Cocaine was a social drug. Yeah, I mean, it was we a talked drug about that, that yeah, before. Yeah, it was a social that drug. Time, you didn't do like, cocaine, you were like square. It was like the affluent. Yeah, if you, listen, trust me. If you didn't do cocaine, you were square. Exactly, and that's yeah. how nobody, I looked at nobody it. Nobody wanted to fuck with you or hang with you. If you didn't do cocaine, you were fucked up. <laughs> that's crazy. It's crazy, <laughs> man. That is had, right there. Just to be no, in, a, just to be in a circle, you did it. You know yeah, I mean, everybody was doing it. I'm Rick James. James no, absolutely. Richard Pryor and and if you around somebody you don't do cocaine, motherfucker. Man, you stupid mother, you gonna do this shit, bitch ass nigga. Yeah, get out of here. Fuck you, then you a cop or something, motherfucker. <laughs> right, right. That's what they yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> no, man. I mean, it's yeah, absolutely. You know. So, um, so when I looked at it, that's how I looked at it. Yeah, you know, yeah, like I, no, absolutely. This is a sociable Makes thing. Sense. This, this is what you yeah. know. This is what we doing. This yeah, is, it's our generation. And, hey, and, huh, let's keep it real. It still is. <laughs> It well, still is. Yeah. It's a big epidemic. Cocaine, you know, it went underground, but it's really a big epidemic right now. Well, then what was so interesting to me is the real horror What was, was what was happening above you. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, now that's a whole nother world. The Contra shit. And CIA. The Iran Contra, CIA. I mean, that shit. Yo, but listen, when you think about it, right? In this perspective, right? All right, I'm going to try to... People for a black man, right? That's some big shit, man. When you think about some guy, you know, you think That's he's a living, can't read and write, came from the ghetto, yeah, and he's just, yes. you know, what I mean, it was, it was fascinating. He man. has the president talking about the president know his name, and it made a lot of <laughs> sense. politicians in the community knows his name, yeah. Like the, George the, Senior yeah, is the, saying, I was the on the movie phone community with knows Rick. his name. Everybody, <laughs> yeah, everybody knows his name. I mean, I mean, and, and that and, could be a real ego trip too, though. It can. I, I mean, that's more addictive than yeah, than the money and everything. Huh? Than everything, just yeah. to have that type of power and 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 have the. Uh, uh, um, Did you have other uh, um, dealers from all over the country coming trying to meet you? Oh, yeah. Shit? Fuck, Absolutely. can you imagine that? Absolutely. All these guys coming to try to meet you? Well, Rick, it's so, to me, it, it appears to be so cosmic, your life. You know, this, because of who you are now, like Mike, you had to live this super extreme life and have these experiences so that you could come out of it and now spread good and change the way people see the world. Oh, absolutely, you know? absolutely, absolutely. Because how many thousands of guys could have been the guy that got connected to Danilo? 
No, no, no. no listen. listen, no. <laughs> right. I had to be a special person. <laughs> only <laughs> one. No, no. There was only one guy. No way was the only guy to be special. Yeah. If it wasn't him, you know? me, it wouldn't have been nobody. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's it's, the you way. Know, it, 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 it's that dedication that 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 it takes. You know, like who's going to do a thousand squats right. every day? Right. It's you your, know what kind of mindset does that mindset. take to 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 do that? And and the same thing with me. It takes that same type of mindset. Like who's going to stand out on this block? Who's going to take all his money? And don't go buy a car, but put it back into the drugs to make the connection, get hooked on the money. Yeah. That was always my goal is to to hook the connection mm. to where he's not going to want to sell anybody else drugs because he knows that he can come to me and get all his money. His money going to be on time. He's going to be safe. Nothing's going to happen to him while he's on my watch. And, and that's kind of the way I practice uh, uh, my, 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 my trade. So, and that's so hard in the drug business because everybody's so grimy. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right now, yeah, it's so I mean, creepy. Now it's like rob the plug. Yeah. It's all about creepy motherfuckers. <laughs> rob the plug, jealous, and then, creepy people. And then it, really bad stuff, man. And then if he don't like it, shoot him. You yeah. Know? So, so it's it's definitely a a, a different time, a, a different breed of a uh, uh, a people that that's getting involved right now. It's a trip, man. I mean, when you found out about all the shit going on, the Iran Contra deal. I the, didn't believe it. You didn't believe nah, it. Fuck no. Man, what the hell? Rick Ross in, <laughs> in, in, involved with the CIA. Stop it. Who said that? Get rid of that guy. <laughs> I mean, I, I I was baffled. You know, like yeah. not me, little Rick from South Central LA, who had holes in his shoes when he was going to school, and all the kids used to laugh at me because I had a pair of red shoes and my mom made me wear the shoes to school anyway. Tell my boy, you gonna wear them shoes. I don't know what you talking about. Uh, What's the most money you've seen? Boom, it's right there, Bo. Mm, one time I had like 3.2 million cash sitting on the on the floor, you know. I'm sure you wasn't. You know how heavy that is. That's around forty. That's around <laughs> oh, no, forty it take, pounds. It takes you know more than that. It takes a couple people to carry that, Mike. Yeah, it's hard to you got to get a couple people. You, Mike, you, how you much have you seen? Huh? What's the most oh, you've ever goodness. seen? Shit, nigga, I must have listened, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. Oh man, I can't even tell you. This. Listen, one day, um, when we get my divorce, listen, when we, we went to the bank, right? The bank that me and my wife at the time, Robert Gibbons, had, right? And we was going to the bank to see where my money was because this bitch was fucking with some money. Some shit was going on wrong with the money. So we went to the bank, right? And I didn't know where none of the um, accounts or nothing. I knew nothing about money. I was almost like yours. I didn't know nothing about money and anything. I was a dumb motherfucker. He knew how to fight and I made a lot of money. So um, when we got there, and we really didn't have the rights because it was under her name, my... So they, was, they didn't like her so much. They said, listen, the accounts are right here. We got them right here. They're secret account. And if we got our money, it must have been around nine million bucks and stuff. Cash? And we put in a big bag. We couldn't carry. It was too much. So we had to leave some, and we took around a million bucks with us. And we put them in different accounts. Stuff like that. <laughs> Something like God, that. Like that. Bro. It was That's too heavy crazy, for us. That yeah, that crazy. money. That money is heavy. I had it's guys heavy. to carry my money for me, it was though. Heavy. I, I was like, I ain't carrying that shit. You carry it. Get that bag. You get that in. He get the other in. No, no. Listen, it's back breaking work though. Yeah, it's really not fly. Carrying you know? money. Yeah, it's not Count fly, money. Though. I mean, you know, you keep it not digital. Fly. Yeah, keep it it's electric. not fly. Then you get bored with counting it. You know, like, oh man, you missed the count. There's no way you can do that like this. There's no yeah, way you can yeah. do that to the T. There's you no way. <laughs> There's no way. You get so tired, you cramp. You start talking, you lose count. It fucks up. You yeah, I had, I had three girls with money machines to count my money. It had to be with the machines. Because it, it, it got so bad, man. I mean, I remember I was counting the money by hand, and it was like, oh, my goodness. And uh, finally, the guy told me about a money counter. What? They got money counters? No way. You can <laughs> <laughs> That's how green I was, man. But I didn't listen, even know they had money listen, counters. Sometimes it's just so much money, especially, you know, so much fucking money, and like, we don't even count it. Just pack it up. Don't count it. Who cares? Just packs huh? it up. Who cares if you're a couple of thousand short? Yeah, just packs it up. <laughs> Crazy. But you can't hide it. It gets to be so much money. You put it in a, a, a fucking closet. You got to make sure now that you got a hole in the closet that you get a ladder to put the money in because if you open the door, the money will crush you. <laughs> you know, these guys, they're young kids. They're kids, teenagers. It's nuts, though. But this when the dirty part comes of the game when your friends start killing one another. 
You know, guys we grew up with all the time. And then you say, you killed who? You heard somebody died and you're mad. And then you find out your friend killed them. We're all friends. We all grew up and went to school together. We stuck one in his spot. We went in his spot. And they say, to I grew up with him. I fought for him before. I shot out with him before. And he ain't going to put me in on this? And that's how their minds think. Yeah, yeah. What, what you know, the jealousy. The you, jealousy. Owe, you owe me, man. Jealousy. I shot, saved your life before. You ain't going to put me in on this? Mm. Crazy shit, man. You owe me, man. I'm the one that started doing all this shit. Y'all niggas know this because y'all did this one because I'm the only one that started this. Y'all should owe me for this. It's crazy. The crazy mentalities. Yeah, you owe them for life. You know, yeah, for you, real. you can never pay that debt. Never. So, I try to stay away from them kind of guys, though, Mike. Oh, yeah. uh, in Brownsville, Brooklyn, that's all they are. The gangs, the tough guys. Yeah. They're, I, not, they're not satisfied till they're dead. I try to dodge them like a bad habit. You know. <laughs> Rick, what you Let somebody you... else kill him. I don't want to do it. He's always a nice guy, always a gentleman. No one had no one had the no one had the no one had the bad thing to say about him. Like he stole my money, he did bad stuff to me, he set me up. He always he's always a gentleman. Yeah. And you... I heard that you you were very philanthropic during your time. What is that? Give money away. Giving nigga. money away. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I shared. I mean you know, some people call it uh Paying, you know, but but I call it uh, being a philanthropist, mm. helping the community. Yeah, you know, people would come up and say, "Oh, you know, so and so, my son is in jail and he don't have no money, and here my rent is due, my car got repoed." I mean, you know, this is part of 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 being who we supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You know, we yeah. I, I believe that we're here on on the planet to help other people. Yeah, there's no doubt Absolutely. about it. You know, yeah. I don't think that we're here to. Um, and worship. We had to worship. We're born to worship. Yeah, mm. yeah. Before the, before mm. there was anything, the idiots. The, the first man worshipped <clears throat> something. The yeah. first idiot. He couldn't read and write. It had bones. He couldn't walk. He worshipped something. Yeah. Well, we uh, and when you can help somebody, man, just the, the the joy that that you feel when you're able to to give somebody a hand up. You know. Uh, um, yeah. And, and if you ever need a hand up, the 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 feeling that you get, you know, it's a total different feeling when you got like, man, I need a hand. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's 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 kind of like it makes you feel degraded, like you're not, uh, 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 you're not vibrant, and 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 that's why so many young black males are committing crimes because uh, they don't want that feeling. You know, they don't want a handout feeling. They want to stand on their own feet. And um, right now, the way that the system is set up and the way that we've been taught and, and, and programmed um, is not conducive to, to, to that. You know, it's, it's kind of the opposite direction. Yeah. So. What do we do with homeless people? We got to help them. How do we do that? Well, first, first, you know, Mike, you know, you can't help nobody until you got yourself straight, you know. And say I'm straight. How do we help homeless people? I'm curious about this. Well, one. me myself, say for instance, if 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 I was rich, you know, like when I become a billionaire in the next couple say, of years. Say you got a trillion dollars. Well, I would just build a, a big apartment complex, you know, give all of them a place to stay. Uh, we definitely would have to set rules and regulations. You know, uh, uh, most most of the homeless people got mental problems. So we would have to have psychiatrists. We'd have to have doctors. We'd probably have to have security guards as well because some of them have to be handled. You know, uh, uh, some of them are just not in their right minds. You know, some of them are sick people and, and they should be treated as such, uh, uh, not as. Uh, so you say it should be a mental hospital on the, um, in the, on the property? Absolutely. Absolutely. It should be a mental hospital. Uh, uh, we, we definitely should have mental hospitals that that treat uh, people with mental illness uh, a special way. You know, with 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 uh, if my mom had a mental problem, I would want her treated a certain way. Well, if I was running it, I would treat everybody with a mental illness the way I would treat my mama. You know, uh, uh, right now I got a friend who's taking care of his mom. She got old timer. She'll run off or whatever. And he treats her a certain way. You know, he treats her like that's his mom. And and I believe that everybody should be treated with that same. So how do how do we um how do we um police them being abused and being raped and having babies from these widows that are supposed to be taking care of them? Like the AIDS and stuff. I mean, I mean, it's not easy. It's not going to be an easy task. 
uh, but but it's something that that has to be done. You know, we have to do something about our homeless problem. Otherwise, uh, uh, it's going to overtake everybody. You know, uh, um, right now we got people living under bridges everywhere in L.A., you know, everywhere you look and and not just L.A. You know, I, I get to travel the country and, and speak and, and I see the same type of uh, uh, um, situation all over the country. And um, we just have to do something about it. And I believe that. And, and even here in, in, in California, you know, the taxpayers did pass a bill where everybody agreed to take more out of their taxes to to do something about the homeless. But now our politicians is not. No, taking. they need to be programmed. Not giving. They keep, they don't know what to do with money. You can't Absolutely. give them money. You need to give them programs that can educate them, that could program them to take care of themselves, or to go to some particular um, kind of um, venue that can take care of them. Absolutely, I totally agree. I totally agree. We we need psychiatrists that that uh, 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 have their best interests at heart. Matter of fact, I just went and spoke. At a at a home the other day, for uh, uh uh for some some women who had mental problems, you know, they supposed to be in jail, but they were weren't competent to stand trial. So what they're doing now is they're putting them in, in these little houses, and they, they have about twenty girls living there. And I went and spoke to them, and and what I told them is that if you don't fight your 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 sickness, and you allow your sickness to take over then you're been a victim. But if you fight your sickness to come out of it, to be a better person, to stop yourself from doing whatever crime you did to get yourself in this position, then you become a winner as soon as you start to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even. But when I become a billionaire, I'm gonna do something about it. You know, I'm not gonna be one of these billionaires who they get the money and they put it in the bank and they get to ride around and tell everybody, "Oh, look how rich I am! Look what kind of car I got! Uh, uh, you know, look, look how many girlfriends I got!" And Mike wants to build something for homeless people. You no, know, Mike is right. Yeah. We should build something for homeless people. Absolutely. We should Absolutely. build something to, to to set a standard that that the rest of the world. Would we'll marvel at it and say, "Wow, absolutely!" They they did that for their sick and they're they're, they're ill. Yeah, you know, uh, um, that's the American way. You know, that's the way that that I was always taught America should be. Not right. that it's always been like that because we know that it hasn't. No, America's about competition and about image, competitiveness yeah. and, and competitiveness and image. Yeah, and we got to change that. Yeah. You know, we 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 have to come in here. And, and set a new tone. You know, we can't we can't let this environment dictate to us who we are and who we're going to become. Uh, uh, you know, right now with all of the hate crimes and people walking in churches, shooting people and and, and all that is a reflection of what. Uh, this country has become, Yeah. you know. Uh, and and if we don't correct it, it it's only going to get worse. I mean, we're seeing people go in and shoot innocent kids. I mean, unheard of, you know, crazy. Uh, uh, 10 or 15 years ago. You know, you never would have thought that nobody would go into a school. Now, we know school kids shoot each other, you know, uh, uh, gangs and stuff like that. But I'm saying like a guy just goes into the school and, and just randomly starts shooting innocent people that they never saw before, never had an well, argument that's on, with. That's only in America. You know, other parts of the world that's going, that's been going on for years. You know what I mean? Because most parts of the world has always been more aggressive than the American part. When you had the guys like the Jackal, you had the the the, um, the bottom line half gang, those guys from the '60s, all those terrorist European gangs and stuff. They really did a number in the '60s and '70s and stuff, and early '80s. Mm. They they're the ones that um, created um, Yasser Arafat and all those guys and stuff. But but they those guys yes. were fighting over property though. Huh? You, they right. were fighting over property. They fighting over land. No, they were fighting over cause, but it, but it, but it, but it trinkles down. All that stuff trinkles down to us. Right. It all trinkles down. To, it trinkles down to the Empire State Buildings, the two trade centers getting crushed with the airplane. It all trinkles down to that. Mm. It all trinkles down. Yeah. You know what I mean? But these lunatics going the in, in one churches. Is the faith of all. And, Going in churches and schools and just like shooting everybody they never seen before, never had an argument with them. I mean, yeah, that's strange. There's just so many mentally ill people. You know, we don't do anything. But they feed they they feed their mental 
illness the wrong yes, stuff you know exactly. when you start feeding the mental illness guns and violence yeah, and pills and pills i don't think they mentally yeah i think this is something they want to do i think this is a belief system and this is what they believe in and i think they're doing it for a cause uh-huh. whatever cause it may be a racial cause a spiritual cause a religious cause whatever that's their cause i don't believe they're mentally ill you're right and some of them do have that that religious issue and and I don't know. I mean, you, you know. know how complicated life is to deal yeah. with. That's why people kill them. Cause I can't deal with this. You throw it out. No, they don't say. Hold on. So let me get, let me count to ten. Take this, some deep breaths and let me go on again. I just want it over with. I can't take the fucking pain. <laughs> Crazy. And it's only an illusion. The pain is an illusion. When I was, this will be a little bit of a shift, but um, when I was a freshman in high school. I had a teacher who grew up in L.A. And he said that these trucks or containers or trains used to show up open full of drugs and guns. I heard those stories. And I was like, no fucking way. And then watching your movie last night, I was like, they were doing that. That was happening. Well, my guys were bringing the drugs in on military planes. Right. Right, that was an operation. The operation. I mean, you guys, yeah. No, but this (laughs) seemed to me like they were open for anyone to come in or someone to come in and take the guns and and the drugs, people from the community. I don't know. I I heard those stories that they left trains over there for for weeks and and stuff full of guns, and and I never saw it um, and never participated in in the gun buy, but I've heard those stories. Hmm. Um, like I said, my guys were, were they had the military back, and so yeah, they they flew their drugs in. <laughs> that was crazy. life is so you know. I mean, well, then it's really interesting to me too when they would show the drug bus on TV. Like there was one big drug bus in the movie they talk about, and they do a big press conference and they talk about these drugs. And they show all the drugs. And they and show the all the drugs, and they talk about how great they did like making this bust and it's like why is there this show when they're involved in the circulation of them and no one i don't think anyone would really care whether the bust was made or not if they didn't know what the drugs were does right. that make sense a little bit a little bit well, well, well it, it's it's a lot to that that you just said um first of all they want to make the bus because the bus is tied to their paycheck. Mm. The more drugs they find, the more people they arrest, the bigger the paycheck, the bigger the budget. Now, we can write in and say, okay, we found 10,000 kilos of cocaine. Well, the other precinct only found 1,000 kilos of cocaine, so our budget should be bigger than theirs because mm. we're fighting a bigger problem. Yeah. So, so they're... Bottom line depends on how big the bus is mm. and and uh, and when they get it. So they 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 just automatically want sense. to increase these numbers. Yeah, and you know? they want everybody to see how awesome they are. So you think that you were like a really big kingpin, right? Right. So tell me, you got a lot of pussy? <laughs> <laughs> really? Not like Floyd. No, come on, man. You got a lot of pussy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, well, you know, any, anytime you you running around Los Angeles and and you know you can put your hands on a couple million dollars at any given time, uh, women like you. You know, they they uh, you know most women are, are looking for security. They're looking for some you guy. Think that's what it is. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's the first thing. You know, you I used to think like when I when I was young, I used to say, I used to think like, oh. He, he must be good looking because he got a fine woman. <laughs> but later on, I found out that it don't matter how, how good the guy look, what can he do for? You know, what kind of car he had? Um, I, I don't see. I don't believe that because I've known. I've, I've, um, I've, I've been fortunate to be friendly with someone with a lot of resources. And um, they need to believe that they're loved. You know, they don't believe if they're not loved. They don't believe they're worthy of anything. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's strange. I don't know. I, hey, listen, I think that's real strange. <laughs> you know? 
You know, some some women can't fuck. They can't. They can't enjoy it. It hurts. Mm-hmm. Some people are really. Some people are really fucked up physically <laughs> and psychologically. You go deep here, Rick. I don't you know. know, man. I ain't never had that problem. I mean, you know. Uh, no, that, I mean they just can't have it. I don't care. Not because somebody. It's just something's wrong with their phys- that they can't have it. She can't take it. Yeah, they just, they don't, it doesn't work well. With nobody, not with care who big you are. It's just with nobody, it doesn't work out well. I don't know. I ain't never seen that. Huh? I mean, I'm like Richard Pryor now when you had to bring it to me, and we're going to test it out. <laughs> test it. I like, well, you know, it's just, I used to, I used to, I think um, when people get to a certain stage of life, I believe that material things are just, they don't mean anything. They want, they want something, they want to figure out who they are, what's my purpose here in life. What's going on? Well, that's here? after you. That's after you straight though. That's after you got everything, and and then you can start thinking like that. But when you when you don't have anything and you're sleeping under the bridge, then it's like, how do I get from under this bridge? And 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 most and, and, and let me say, most black women uh, uh, that I known uh, were looking for security. You know, how can I get out of my mama's house? How can I become secure in, in, in my business? And, and men, too, you know, because one, one of the things that break up most families, uh, black families, is, is uh, money problems. You know, how are we going to pay the rent? You didn't pay the light bill this month. What was your turn? Uh, the car note is right. due. So you say that. So listen, I, I'm not, um, I can't send myself a low-income parent, so I... <clears throat> This is my. I, it's not a problem, but this is weird. I don't, I, I think I, my kids they date white. Guy. I have a, my daughter. She dates a white guy. I have a son that dates a white girl. So I say to myself. Do I say this to me? I let. Um, I live the fucked up example for them. So you know that's what just on That's what I think. That was just on my mind when you said that. So I must have led a fucked up example as a black man to my daughter. You know. So that's what I think to myself sometimes. Right. Right. I don't think it has anything to do with that. Or it could be because of it's because of her lifestyle where she lives. That she's more. I don't know. I used to say. Well, she I probably think around. Really, you know. Yeah, she, but I think she, I, I, that's what I comes to my mind sometimes. That, um, I didn't leave a good example. I wasn't good to her mother. I cheated a lot. Me and her mother fought a lot over bullshit. Never money. It's over me with some other woman. That's all it was. So probably she said this nigga's gonna cheat on me all the time. <laughs> well, well, you know what? Fight with me. And but she had bully everything. Me. She yeah. had everything. Once, once you have. Once you have all your necessities, then you have to look for things that you don't have and things that are not right. And and say for instance, somebody's hungry, well, they're not gonna be worried about you cheating. She's gonna be worried about getting something to eat. That's her first first priority. So once all your necessities are taken care of, then you start to worry about the things that are least important. So uh, uh, I believe that when people are in a certain position, uh, um, their priorities change. You know, um, like most of the, I I stand South Central right now. I'm still standing in the ghetto. You know, uh, most of the guys over there don't have jobs. They come over and ask me for a job. They work for $100 a week, you know, because they don't have any money. Mm -hmm. So when you don't have any money, uh, uh, your priority becomes to get you some money because, you know, without money in this country, you can't eat, you can't sleep, you can't buy gas, you can't use the bathroom. You know, you go in a gas station now and you want to use the bathroom and you didn't buy nothing. And we don't we don't allow people to use the bathroom here, only customers. So so it, it, it economics is so, so important uh, um, in, in the black community right now. And, and um, I have to speak, you know, to, yeah. to that. that, Absolutely, that uh, without the economics, uh, the crime rate is not going to go down. Uh, gangs are going to keep going. Uh, we have to do something to 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 knock knock it down. You know where where uh, they have the basic necessities to 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 survive. Do you have any ideas on where to start? Oh yeah, you start with yourself. Hmm. You know, first you get yourself together, and then once you, you, what I learned from the drug business and, and how I how I how I got so wealthy in the drug business is once I had figured it out for myself. I figured out how I could take $125 and I could turn it into a million bucks. I figured that out. So once I figured it out, I just had to start teaching my friends. And I went from one after another and then teach them. Okay, this is how you do it. Don't get high. If you get high, you ain't going to get no money. You got to make a choice. Do you want to be a, 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 a addict 
or do you want to be a millionaire? And, you know, most of the time they'll say, oh, I want to be a millionaire, but I'm still going to get high. <laughs> And and you know it it it, it it's it's com more complicated. It, people have done it. I've seen them get high and, and still get their money, but it's it's a harder yeah, process. Yeah, yeah it's rare. Really messy. Because you know you want to spend all your time getting high. Like, yeah. hold on, I'm gonna take care of that when I finish. When I finish this one here. <laughs> you know, when like in my world, like with my friends and stuff, like we'll see each other on the weekend. <clears throat> we be partying our ass up. But from Monday to Friday, there's killing, there's setting up, there's deals. There's, man, it's a hell of a life. And sometimes, you know, you see the crew, and then sometimes the crew that you're used to seeing, they disappear. Some of them are missing. You know? Crazy. Mike, I know you Crazy took care of a lot of your guys, though. All the time. You saved them. Yeah, all the time. So they didn't have to do go in the streets no all more. All the time. Yeah, so. But some, hey, listen, but some guys, they just can't stop. It's they, not the money. They want to go back to the streets. No, it's not the money. Like listen, Shook Knight, he didn't want to. Listen, wanna... listen, it's that glory, too, to have people afraid of you and fearing you. That's the drug. They love that. Could get anybody the house to buy it. Well, we do see them every club. now and then yeah. that, that, that'll do like what Shook did, get everything that you want and then still want to be in the streets. <sighs> But and that, that's insane. That, Stay away from the streets. Streets undefeated. That's that mental hospital. Yeah. You need to be in a mental hospital when you think <laughs> like that. The streets undefeated. <laughs> you can't win in the streets. And the streets don't forgive. No, not a little bit. Yeah, once you get out there, um, it's rough. But uh, I believe that, that that that's my goal right now is to uh, become successful uh, first for myself and my family and and then so that I can uh, show other people how to do it, you know, how to um, how to get out of poverty. So how what are you going about doing? How do you make income? What do you do for income? Now? Right now? Yes. Um, marijuana. Yes. Um, I just started my vape pen company. I sell cars. This is a vape too. It looks like a blunt. I thought that was a blunt, man. <laughs> All uh, kinds of stuff, I man. sell cars. Yeah, yeah your uh, partner was telling me that. Uh, what kind of cars you sell? I can get anything you want. Oh, shit. Any car you want, you can holler at me. I'll get it for you. I'm gonna get you a deal too. I love that. <laughs> I got my my, my t-shirt line that that I'm doing. Uh, I got two books out now. Um, I got my first book, my autobiography, and then I got um, my new book that just came out, The Twenty One Keys of Success. Um, and that book came about. Uh, it's about my first six months out of prison. Wow. You know how I got out of prison, and and I was homeless for a while. When I first got out, I was homeless. Believe it or not, nobody, uh, uh, nobody would would help me out. You know, I I had all the intentions, and 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 everything. But uh, when you're not doing good, nobody's gonna reach back. You know, I got out of prison with two hundred bucks, and and I had to take that and go to work with it, and. Um, now um, I got a nice crew, about twenty people that I'm working with, maybe thirty, and uh, we we gonna we gonna build this thing into a billion dollar industry. Um, starting, you know, Americans are taught that poverty is um, contagious. Americans they're taught to believe that you know poverty is contagious. We stay away from anything that's poverty orientated. It's ruthless. Yeah, it's really cold blooded. Yeah, poverty is ruthless. Yeah, you ain't got to well, do nothing. I mean, it's horrible, you know, with the homeless situation in L.A. Because so many people just want to isolate them and send them away and not help them. And hey, just... Melissa and Dick, um, Evan, the gap between the rich and the poor is getting so big. It's something yeah, bad is no. getting ready to happen. Something real bad is getting ready now. Our children, it is getting greater. Now, now our children got to worry. If we don't make this better and make you know take care of this problem. Our children, our children, our kids are going to be in trouble. Yeah. They'll be in a lot of trouble. The world going to be in trouble. Yeah. Those are, the world is going to be our kids. Those are the youth. Right. You're They're right. You're right. Trouble. The world is definitely in trouble if we don't. So it's our goal. It. I mean, it, it, that should be. We got to do something with this gap. This financial that should be, gap. That should be our mission as yeah. as people right now to figure out how to solve the problems that we have and 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 that's. That's what I want to do. I mean, I would love to be like, you know, when it all was said and done, they'd be like, man, Rick came up with the solution, man. I love that. He He's the plug. <laughs> That's dope, man. The new plug. The new plug. I of, love of that. The plug again, you know. Yeah. So. Um, That's awesome, man. 
Um, I got to ask you about, uh, what's his name? William Roberts. Is that his name? The fake Rick Ross? Ah, uh, yeah, I know Yeah, that what guy. about that guy, man? <laughs> Why is he a bad guy? Tell me, man. He seems like a sweet guy. What's wrong with him? <laughs> well, his response to you uh, to really turned me off. I'm not What'd a fan anymore. What did he say to you? What did he say? He called me a rat. Oh, I'm down on my luck. You. Say what? He said I'm a rat. I'm down on my luck. And well, he, didn't, he shouldn't have said that. He yeah, should. yeah. Not use my name. I mean, like... I'm using your car. I, I took your car, Mike, and, and I drove it to the thing, and everybody recognized me, and I got a deal. Uh, but I'm going to keep the car, and I ain't going to get you nothing for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, us as um, black people, we have to know how to learn how to love each other. Then we learn how to love each other collectively. You know what I mean? As yeah. a group of people, we haven't learned how to love each other yet. Yeah, but, you know, I, I don't really have um, much bad to say about him. You know, I done told jokes yeah. about him. And I never did. Yeah, I, no. I, I you, don't dislike no, the guy. No, you were very honorable, man. I, I don't dislike the guy. Yeah. You know, I think he's a clown, though. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, well, he's revealed himself to be that. Because he could have been really cool about it and been really respectful. And I think I mean, he would have gone another he could, way. He, he could have been so much. You know, I, I, I felt that, that me and him together could have did some powerful things sure you still can why not you still can listen it was interesting we, sometimes we got to take ourselves out of the equation our feelings out of the equation you know what i mean forget what anybody would think if this is a good thing we can work together it's a possibility we can work together forget what people would said mm. about what we say you know the purpose i don't think he'll work with me though yeah Mike. i, I, mean, I, I gave to, offers to, there's to, free will man I done gave offers and, and I don't know well i mean if he came today and said he wanted to i'd be like okay where's come it on. at now? i'd be like i'd be like ah oh, What's the situation? I gotta work now? with somebody else that's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> What's the situation taught, right now? You could teach people and show people. Some people you just. I was retarded. I was one of those guys before. I had you was retarded before. Oh man, I'm such an asshole. <laughs> I was oh, too. Man, We've sometimes. all been there. I was I too, but like I came out of my yeah, retardism. Oh yeah, yeah. But when you come out and you find out how retarded you feel, like killing yourself. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, I was I retarded too. I said that. I was retarded too. Um, yeah. So where's that situation but, but I came now? out of it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, his his numbers is down on the charts. And I don't know nobody listen to his music no more. Rick Ross? Yeah, he's gonna lose that Rick Ross. I think he does. I mean, you he still know, still use it. Universal want him to use the name. They they won't let him change it. Yeah, they'll put money on it. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. You know, uh, um, right now, man, I'd be so tied up in myself and what yeah. I'm doing that I that, was just you know that it's hard for me to of like course. to like recognize you know yeah. like. Like somebody was telling me about some boots was in my house one day that somebody had on. I was like, man, I don't be looking at no boots, man. Come on. I'm bigger than that. You know, so um, I, I really just don't pay attention to him, you know. Yeah, uh, I know course. that I don't have to hear his music on the radio anymore. You know, they stopped playing his music on the radio. So um, that's a, a sign. for that, man. He took a hit. Oh no, the they universe. kept playing. No, they kept playing him after, after he lost the loss. I mean, after he won the lawsuit, he's still playing. But I mean, you know. Well, karmically. With, 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 with rap music though it has a it has a time cycle you yeah. know like oh you hot today you might be hot two weeks or three weeks and then all of a sudden you're gone yeah. you know not to be heard of again you know that they, they go and they repo your house and get all the cars and like man we just loaned you that that wasn't none of yours you you was faking and <laughs> this wasn't real uh it's a trip but what i really don't like about it is the image that it portrays to our kids you know, our kids start to believe that these guys made all of this money selling drugs and, yeah. and that they was killers. And, and then our kids go out and practice the things that these guys rapped about, uh, uh, which was totally fake. Mm. And that's one of my biggest gripes with the whole the whole industry and in that he took a real name that's going down in history, you know, that's in law books and use that name to portray a lie mm -hmm. uh, and I really have an issue with that you know I have an issue that the kids don't know his real name uh, when I go to schools and speak sometime the kids ask me why did I change my name to Rick Ross and I said well you're gonna have to talk to my mama <laughs> that's on my birth certificates that's not a, a, a rap moniker you know I, I'm I'm the real deal I really did the real Rick I, Ross. I, I went to prison I have federal agents you know uh, 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 surrounding my place you kicking know the door down huh? yeah kick the door down I, 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 this ain't no rap video you know yeah. 
that yeah. my documentary is 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 real life experiences. Yeah. So so uh, our kids don't really understand how to decipher real from fake because everybody is allowing them to to do like it, it's yeah. been times I went to schools to speak to the kids and I wasn't allowed in. They didn't allow me to speak. But then I hang around at the football game and the basketball game and they playing these rap records from this guy who who's talking about he's a drug dealer. Interesting. Why weren't they why didn't they let you in? <laughs> they are afraid of a real drug dealer. Mm. They think you're going to be telling the kids to like go sell drugs, kids. Right. But mm-hmm. now, if you're a fake drug dealer who brags about selling drugs... Yeah, that's then, cool. Then you're okay, because you didn't really do it. It's really interesting, man. You know, the times have changed now. See, a lot of those guys, um, Evan, uh, like in our community, a lot of those guys, and you know it, a lot of those guys are not here no more. A lot of guys, from yeah. the first... Um, like the first um, rave of um, rappers and stuff, when they were playing tough guys, other guys that were really tough guys say... Oh, yeah, you are a tough guy? Oh, you really are a bad motherfucker? You killing niggas like that? You got bitches all like that and dope and money and jury? And they, that was their target. Because then they got those ego guys out there. Oh, yeah, you badass motherfucker? You got jury? Where is it at? Yeah. And that's, uh, and that's Well, those guys on the wave. street, they don't have nothing. Yeah, but those, yeah. That, that wave of people are not around anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? They put big laws and now they got the hip-hop police, so most of the rappers and stuff has protection. They better. You know? Because these they guys better. were vicious. Those guys were vicious. And then they go steal the gold and they find out it was fake. Yeah. <laughs> True yeah, that. For real. They wearing fake jewelry. Like, man, I, I did all this. I took a penitentiary chance. and Then, then they want to kill him. It's <laughs> insane. Man. Crazy. Yeah. That's the world is out here. All the music is used to control the youth. It's been that way forever. Mm. Yeah, but we got to do, start doing some music that is uplifting, uh, uh, educational, uh, and that will send us forward. Because if 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 we continue down, you the, get one of those songs out of a thousand. There's yeah, a few of those. A few. you get a couple of them out of a well, thousand. Well, the record label is not going to promote them. Yeah, out of yeah. a thousand, you, you, you know, get a good the record label is not going to promote them. They they're not you know they don't care they they want the bottom line for their for their um, for yeah, their investors uh, but it's gonna be up to people like us to 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 spread the word about how um, this system I mean even like with my movie my movie should have been out yeah my movie should have been out but when I'm talking to these guys from Hollywood they try to convince me how much people are not gonna watch my movie. You know, and I'm like, you can't convince me that because I live in the streets. I live with the people. Because they want you to say, hey, take this $100,000 for your life fucking story, all right? And we want to buy your rights and they right. keep this $100,000 and that's cool. And we're going to sell your rights for $100 million. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you be happy. Cool. Yeah, be happy, nigga. <laughs> it's fucked, man. So, um, I just feel that that they have to deal with me different because my 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 morals is no longer tied to money because what I found out if I tie myself to money I can sell cocaine mm. to my family members or to anybody. Uh, oh, they're gonna give you your money. Well, as soon as you keep staying on these iPods and stuff, they're gonna give you your money. Put it out there. They're gonna give you your money. Yeah, 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 yeah they. <laughs> no, serious. Absolutely. Put them on blast. They're gonna give you your money. I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna stay on their head. I've been on their head. I told them they better pay me my money if they want me to quit. Oh, those yeah, those yeah, people dude. don't like bad reputation. Their whole life is on a, rep- a fake reputation. They don't want to have no damaged reputation. Yeah. yeah but uh, that, that's pretty much the, the, the way I, I, I've been handling it. And. Um, just going around trying to show people how they can have the same type of success that that I'm having right now. So you know? you're a beautiful guy, man. You're yeah, really man. awesome. We're glad to have you. Here. <laughs> I'm glad it's to be to here, have man. You here, brother. When they told me, they was like, "Man, Mike, <laughs> Mike, want to interview you, man." I said, "Man, Mike Tyson, yeah. man." I told your son I was going to interview you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Told him I was gonna your name you. came up early on, like yeah, when we first, first started, started. the show. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, you know, I've been out here working hard, man. I I haven't taken a day off in ten years. You know, um, every single day I wake up with the same mindset uh, that I have to make the world a better place. You know, and and if I don't, uh, who else will do it? You yeah, know? man. I love that. 
Keep doing it, brother. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. What do you think about this world we live in? What do you think you go after we finish in this world? I think we're done. No, what do you think? You think it's over? It's a blackout? It's that. That's it. It's dark. Yeah. It's all dark and shit is over. That energy that you got right well, now. Well, you know, atoms never die. Yeah. I so, know, so I'm so. trying to ask you, what's all that energy? That you, I'm not talking <laughs> about your physical. The energy going to continue to live. You yeah. know, that energy that, that, that we have today, it never dies. You know. Uh, um, How do you know it never died? Well, well, scientists say that atoms live forever. You can't, you can't kill atoms. So, so we all have atoms in us, and we made an atom. So, uh, we'll continue to live. I like that logic. Bro. Yeah, that's a good one too. Good. But do I believe that there's a heaven? Uh, you know, that I'm going. No, I don't believe. I don't so, believe. So, do you believe this when it opens just a black bean? There's no more. <laughs> do you believe that like, your energy is gonna go up and you can look at yourself down and see yourself no. die your body? No, no, I don't believe that. All right, cool. I don't. I don't. That's I what believe, a Mike's test. I believe that my legacy is going to dictate how things should be going for years. You know, that's what I want. I want my uh, legacy to live on. Like, in the Rick showed us this. Yeah. And this is how you should do, you know. Uh, uh, one, of my, one of my coaches, you know, my tennis coaches, he, he used to tell me that you live until the last person speak your name. Mm. And once that's over, then... That's it. You're you're done. Who the last That's person? Who knows who the last person is? Maybe it's your great 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 grandkid. Right, right. You know, uh, maybe it's some person who picks up your book and read it and was like, "Wow, I got a lot out of that yeah. from old that old guy." You know, That's who lived true. back in uh, nineteen. 19- 88 <laughs> that's an interesting perspective too, man. Yeah. So. Imagine, imagine all this we experience right now. Yes, an illusion it never existed. Well, it is illusion. But it's in my mind, you know. I believe yeah. that 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 we create our own dreams, and all of you guys are just in my dream. And yeah. uh, that's right. Plan, How did we get here without you, you inviting us? Plan your part. I invited you. I wanted <laughs> <Yeah>. you in. <laughs> I wanted you to be here, yeah. man. That's deep as without fuck, even meeting us, how you wanted us to be here? <laughs> hey, you believe it or not, man. You, one day you got to read the article they did on me in LA Magazine, right? What they said absolutely. They was writing my obituary. Oh wow! They thought I died. Wow. Yes, this guy wrote. He wrote. He was like, "I'm here. Uh, I rode out to Lompoc Penitentiary with gun tires, me razor wire, and I'm going to see Freeway Ricky Ross. And this is the last time I'll be writing about him. He's gone. He's through. The world is tired of his dreaming. They don't want him to dream no more. And then when he wow. came out there, I was telling him about. I heard Maxine Waters talk about you a lot. Use your name a lot. Maxine, she loves me. I yeah, love Maxine too. She's an awesome. That's chick. my lady. <laughs> And her, not, not like that if her husband here, but, yeah, but that's yeah. you know. I, I, husband, ex football player. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, he used Sydney, to play tennis right? too. Yeah, Ricky? He, he used to come down there. I used to beat up on him. Ricky Waters. Oh no, 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 Sydney, Sydney, Sydney Waters. Mm. Yeah, but in that article, I, I I pretty much was laying out to uh, to this guy what I'm doing right now. That that I was going to be in this position, you know, and and. Uh, you spoke it's, it's, it into existence, man. But that's how we do, though. Yeah. It's like selling drugs, right? Like, look, I spoke into existence being a drug dealer. Because I go watch this movie. Mike, I know you've seen Superfly. Superfly. Yeah, ah, man. Ronald oh, Neal. Yeah. Ronald I Neal. knew it. I knew Curtis it. Curtis Mayfield, dude. Superfly guy, right? But listen, can I tell you something? If you lived in a community like mine, that's what was based on, the, you know, that was the sold superstar. to that community. It was sold to that community. Yeah. Yeah, and they sold it to me. Yeah. So now, look, I go see this movie. Now, I still love Arthur Ashe, right? But I just saw a black man stare down like 10 white cops. Oh, he, he, he he break them down like, oh, you you, you saw the movie, Mike. Yes. You can do my dirty laundry if yeah. you want to. That ain't going to help you. But listen, man, when I saw the Mac and um, what was the other one, Willie Dynamite, that really turned me out. Yeah. You know, Willie Dynamite. Oh, that was good stuff. I saw all those. That was good stuff. But I just, Superfly was mine. I had, when I got my first DVR, two movies Superfly, Scarface. Them was my first two movies, man. We watched them over and over every day. I'm sitting in the crack house selling crack out the door watching Superfly. Like, oh, get him, man. Get him. <laughs> and, and that's what. That's what I became. I became Superfly. Wow. Those are the guys in our neighborhood, you know? It's crazy, man. 
And, and it's crazy how when I was in prison, I started to think about that. Right. Because look at this here. Then I went back into my life and then like I used to ask my girl, hey, you going to run for me when I go to jail? I ain't never been in a police car. But I'm asking her, you, you going to run for me when I when I go to jail? I ain't going to tell you what she said. I'm going to leave that out. <laughs> so when I'm in jail now and I'm looking back at my life and I'm starting to I'm learning, I'm studying, and I'm, I'm becoming conscious. And I'm like, damn, Rick, you know you thought your way in jail. I said, no, nah, it can't work like that. Won't you think your way out of jail then? If you think you thought your way in, think your way out. Bob, that's how I got out of prison. Because I started to think my way out like I thought my way in. Just like right now, I'm going to think of a way to solve the problems that we have in, in our community with the homeless, with the like of jobs, with gang activity, with all of the things that are ill in our community and some of them that I know I help fuel from selling drugs. Now it's my goal to to stop those things, and and that's my mission right now. That's what, that's what I'm on. I I ain't I ain't on the money, but I know I got to get the money. So I know I got to get the but money. We got to change the perception we have of ourselves and one another. But we need somebody to show us that we should change. Because see, see how can you change unless you know that you should change? Well, you should know you should be, you shouldn't talk to people in certain ways. You should but, know but Mike, that. how do you know that if nobody ever teaches you? If 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 nobody never shows you I say you, common fucking sense. No, it ain't common. Yeah, I want common sense. It ain't common. No, Mike, it ain't common. Listen, when Mike. I get bullied, like this friends, when I was a little kid and I got bullied, and some of you stupid motherfucker, what you doing here, nigga? I would say, Wow, I would like to I wish this motherfucker didn't talk to me like that. Once he did that, I know he could, go, he could do anything. Kick me, rape me, slice my throat. He could do anything to me. You know what I mean? That's the first thing. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't want nobody to feel the way I felt the way he, because he talked to me that way. Right. I, I agree. But what I'm saying is that he didn't know that he shouldn't talk to you like that. He didn't know that he was. You think he talked to his mother like that? He, he probably didn't, but he may yeah. have. Some of them yeah, talk to their mamas like that. Right. Like, yeah, he might be being right. spoken but, to like that as but, well. But, Mike, what I'm saying, listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm trying to say. I don't even know if I got it right. I could, I could be totally off. <laughs> off Give off. me a go at it. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm going to I'm gonna try to explain it. How can you know if nobody ever taught you when all the people that taught you taught you that this is the way you should be acting? You've been taught to act like this. This is not you. But once you are taught to act like that, you believe that this is the way you should be. Yeah. Well, my mother taught me, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, ma'am, no, ma'am, and I always got my ass kicked. But you were different, though. I'm saying, I'm saying the the, the 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 normal teaching right now, right now, the teaching on the street, yeah. be a gangster, be tough, beat the plug, steal, rob, lie, fake. Do whatever you got to do. To make it. Yeah. And even if you ain't made it, fake it. You know, so so this becomes your reality. This becomes our reality of, of not, not having, but fake like you have. You know, uh, spend your last dollar to, to look good, even though shit is fucked up. You know, uh, you ain't took a shower, but you got on new clothes. Yeah. You know, and, and this is the, 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 the perception that this world has 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 been teaching people, man. So I, I don't I don't. And, and, and yeah, the person who did that to you, he holds some responsibility. But I look at it like this here. They try to they try to front me down, right, and make me feel bad about myself. And they say, well, look how many people that you messed up when you sold drugs. I said, yeah, I'm a bad guy. But then what about the guy who taught me how to sell drugs? Does he hold some responsibility for teaching me what I learned from him? And then we got to go back to the guy that taught him. I mean, you know, you could just keep... Going. And the people who decided to buy the drugs. And drugs from you. don't have no end. Oh, Just the people who bought the drugs no got end. some responsibility too? Absolutely. Because if they didn't buy it, the guy who taught me, who probably wouldn't have even been selling it because. And all even, the people who taught them that they needed to buy these drugs to feel 
a certain way that made them feel happy. There we go. There we go. So you just keep going. I mean, the thing could go on and, and that's on. why I think your point about it starts with yourself is so powerful, man. Because if you can teach everybody to take care of yourself first and get right with that, then you can start to make change in the world and people around you. Amen. I agree. <laughs> I think I <laughs> think you, drugs Rick. are meant to be in the society. They've been inside since the beginning. Well, of they'll life. always be here. They'll always they be around. It has and humans, no end. humans are not the only animal that gets high. Yeah. No. You know, jaguars will eat the vine that create that holds the DMT. Yeah. And they'll get Elephant, super high. Elephants eat sour oranges. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. They do. Yeah, they get buzz shit. too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, they get a buzz. I mean, you know. It, a lot of people don't want to deal with what's life, going on around them, so they just want to mellow out. Man, yeah. I'm just, I'm just gonna mellow out, man. I'm gonna hit a joint. I'm gonna hit a joint. I ain't fuck with nobody. You know what I'm saying? I ain't bother nobody. I just want to be here and chill out. That's right, man. I mean, you know, it's all about how you use them. You know, how you use them. And, and then if we if we if, if if we want to 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 fight the war on drugs, I I believe it starts with with education. Yeah, you know we we already know there's been reports to show that there's money is better spent on prevention than uh, intervention. You know incarceration and all that that shit don't work. Yeah, it don't stop bullshit. nobody. I knew guys yeah. were in jail making plans with the Colombians. You know like, <laughs> they on the yard like oh man we finishing shiploads over and here. It doesn't even do anything. Nothing. So putting them in jail, it's they're still doing business. Bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes bigger. You no, make them no. bigger. Listen, when you do time in prison, no one gets you by. Your mind being stimulated. Sometimes you just oh shit, not do. But when your mind stimulated, you know shit's going on. We're making money. We're doing it. We're doing this shit's on for. I'm gonna call them. It's gonna be a fuck scene. We gonna listen to that. Just your mind <laughs> needs to be stimulated. No, I'm serious. My yeah. mind was stimulated in prison. It was like a, I was like at a camp. My mind, you know, it's a ball. It was just stimulated constantly. You just kept yourself busy. Yeah. Yeah. You got to. You yeah. got to. I stay busy too. I learned how to read there. Yeah. I read it's amazing. Over, I read over three hundred books. Isn't it wonderful learning how to read? And that's another oh world. Oh my God. That's another world. I went to China. I was in prison yes. in China. Right. I'm in. I'm in a Me China. Me too. I read the life story of Mao Zedong. I was in fucking China. I knew the life, the history of the fucking country. Man. When I go there, I talk about everything I learned from the book. And say, how do you know so much about China? Because I was in prison, I read the book in China. So, like, in, in that article that I was telling you about, the guy talk about when I tell him that I might be more freer when I was in prison than I'd ever been before in my life. Because wow. now I had learned how to visualize, mm. how to fantasize, how to open up my mind. When before my mind was trapped in South Central Los Angeles, which was penitentiary bound, like I'm going to the penitentiary, you know. But like, when I was in the penitentiary, I got all the news first. People, I would call people, and they say, "Yo, you know, such and such got killed," or this and that. And I would call such and such. And I said, "Yo, what happened? So how did he get killed?" And they said, "He got killed." I didn't know he got killed. You know, I would get all the news first, and they say, "What happened to this person? What happened to that person? I heard this happened." How do you find this shit out, Mike? You're in prison, <laughs> and the word and the word just comes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, it circulates around that prison. Yeah. But it's just, you know, I mean, I don't know. Life is, is crazy, you know, and and I'm just going to keep being crazy in it and yeah, and keep letting my mind uh, run free, you know. Uh, I don't want my mind to be incarcerated, you know. Um, just like the other day. I, I went to jail the other day, like a week ago. I was Tell in jail. me about that. How did that work out? Oh, man, me and my son. Is sitting, my son that you met. We sitting Tell in the car that. and um, – we're just sitting there, and the cops pull in the driveway, and they got their lights out. And so, you know, you automatically know something is up. You know, cops at nighttime, they cops riding with their lights out, look out. So they walk up to the car, and they ask me for my ID. I hand them my ID and everything, and I'm like, oh, well, this is going to be nice and quick. Uh, and then they said, uh, you on parole? And I said, nope. And then the other cop had walked over to my son and asked him, was he on parole? And then my son said, yeah. He said, oh, this one over here is on parole. And the one next to me said, oh, you lied to me. And I said, no, I didn't lie to you. I told you I wasn't on parole, and I'm not. Get out of the car. So they snatched us out the car, and then he asked me to sit on the ground. I said, no, I'm not sitting on the ground. Oh, you're going to sit on the ground. No, I'm not going to sit on the ground. You might throw me on the ground, but I'm not going to sit on the ground. It's a difference. So uh, he started trying to handcuff me, and I, you know, like, I ain't, now you ain't finna handcuff me. Handcuff me for what? You know, like, I ain't that shit. And, um, uh, 
next thing I know, his partner grabbed me and they both had me by the arms and took me to the ground and put his knee in my back, roughed me up. And then they took me to jail for uh, uh, obstruction of an investigation. So they gave me a ticket, let me out in about six hours. You know, and I was like, come on, man, where the, where the lunch sacks at? Give me a sack. I'm, I want a sack. <laughs> put me in a cell. I want to take a nap. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, put me in jail, it, it, it don't scare me going to jail. Like, I did 20 years, man. I, I can do six hours on a handstand. Matter of fact, I'm going to do the push-ups the whole six hours that I'm here. So, um, but what it did show me is the state of this society the way they still look at a black man in, in, in this country that uh, we can be made to sit on the ground or, or, or roll over and, and I ain't rolling over. You know, I ain't laying down. I ain't sitting down unless I want to sit down. Uh, if somebody asks me who I want to sit down for, I might sit down, but uh, uh, I'm not doing none of that. You know, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to be a man now uh, for what I believe in. And if it means going to jail for what I believe in or, or whatever the consequences may be for what I believe in, then that's what it is. So uh, that's why I didn't sit on the ground. That's why I went to jail. And if they came and they did it today, they would take me to jail again. And every time they asked me to sit on the ground. So all the cops out there watching, if you ask me to sit on the ground, you got to take me to jail. <laughs> Fuck. It's so fucked up, man. But I love you, Rick. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank I, you, man. I really appreciate you coming you in. Love, Mike. I'm Mike. <laughs> yeah, man. It was great to have you here. Come Rick, by any Rick, time, man. Jail sucks. Yeah, yeah, I used to be yeah. in jail all the time. I to, but I could not think of it now. Fuck, what did I do in my life? Why did I waste so much time in jail? Yeah. Glad you guys are out. Yeah. Doing a lot of good, man. Oh, we're gonna do more good, yeah. man, and uh, a lot more to come for Mike, sure. Mike, one day God we gotta go to, to one of them high schools and talk to the kids, man. That'd be pretty they, interesting. They would love to see you. You know, I went awesome. to a high school this I went to a fucking high school the other day and um not the other day, ten years ago. And the, and I went to the classroom so the um the principal had this big fucking screen and so he's showing the kids my fight for the kids the kids didn't know the fuck I was. They said, Mike Tyson's the guy from the movie, the hangover. They had no idea I was a fucking fighter. And that's the movie so I just said, and the principal was saying, No, he was a fighter. They had no idea I was a fight that wow. that was a fighter. That's so you know what I mean? Time just flies so back. One of the greatest. Well thank you. Thank you, brother. The people's champ. Somebody told me that you say That's the right. people's champ. That's right. The, the, the people's champ is more important than the belt. Yeah. Some, somebody told me you said that. Yes, I did say that. He said, you can have a belt, but if you ain't got the people. You ain't got That's nothing. True. huh? True. I want the people. That's for sure. Keep the belt. Keep the money. I was Give just me always, the people. I was just always in the streets with the people. I was just a street person. I just happened to be the champ and I fought and stuff. I was they always, told me. They said Mike used to be. in the streets with people. Somebody told me Mike used to be in South Central LA playing f catch football with the kids. Yeah, in the middle of the streets. Because I used to date some girls out there. And, and uh, uh, I used to date some girls. They said he would be in the middle of the street and all of a sudden like. Ten cars will pull up. Mike, you gotta go. <laughs> you can't be over here playing football. Well, I used to hang out with the people, though. Compton, we go hang out. In the yeah, project. they said Mike used to be. I, I heard it's this so in jail. Awesome, this was stuff they was talking about in jail. Like, wow. like, man, Mike was on such such a street the other day playing touch football in the middle of the street with the kids, and so and, crazy. and like ten cars pulled up, and, and they jumped out. Hey, Mike, you can't be over here like this, Mike. Come on, let's go. That's well, who he is. Yeah, man. but I'm never gonna be afraid of the people, though. You know. Yeah. Imagine me being afraid of people. I'd be afraid of myself. Yeah, you know. It's awesome, man. It's an awesome way to be. Should we wrap this thing, Mike? Are we out of here? What time is it, man? I don't know. It's like midnight. <laughs> midnight. Get out of here. Yeah, I'm awesome. We've been man. going for a while, Thank man. You, Rick. Thank you, guys. Where can everybody find you? Yeah, give us information. You got uh, a million people looking at you. They can find me on my social media, at Freeway Ricky. Um, on all the social media, all across the board. Also, if I, I, I didn't bring no books with me today, sorry. Um, Who's gonna play you in the movie, man? Childish Gambino. Ooh, you think good he choice. Can do it? You think Childish he can do Gambino. It? He better great do it choice, if, if, if he ain't crazy. Does he know how to act? He's, a good he's actor? great. Have you seen uh, he's him? Good in? He's actor. He's super. Great I, talent. I, I don't know. I haven't been no. I have no. I don't know nothing about nobody. Somebody yeah, had had, had put a picture up of me and him on social media, and because I didn't know who he was, 
Uh, I'd heard his song though. You know, uh, mm. this is America. Yeah, I'd amazing. heard that song, but I didn't know the name of the of the, of the artist. And and then uh, when they put the picture up and they told me who it was, and I know my my casting director, she gonna have a fit for me saying that. She's like, oh, don't be. That's mentioned. a dope choice, man. Good choice. Yeah, but uh, that's who I want. The script is almost done. Uh, shout out to my script uh, script doctor Kush. Uh, Reginald Hudlin and oh, they're good. The brothers, right? Hudlin brothers. Yeah, that's who. That's who did it. We doing it independent. Yeah, it's it's totally dope. independent. Uh, and 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 then uh, this is. I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna get ready to go. This is what the movie is supposed to capture: a young man that wants a car and a girl. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Peace, y'all. Hit me up. Yeah, One love. love. Hey. Hey, hey, what about that show? That show that's on television. Freeway. Freeway. That, that, Freeway. No, it's another show. What's that show on television? On Netflix. Snowfall. Snowfall. Ah, Snowfall. That about you. Any that about you, that was man? On FX. Yeah, they ripped me off. Yeah, they're trying to steal your story for me. free, uh, right? You know, that was these motherfuckers. Brad was just they saying. They just changed the name. He read the book. Uh huh. And how similar the book and the and the, and the show is. But you know what? Hey, y'all stole it. Peace. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. I'm gonna do something else. Yeah. More creative because Hell I yeah. got an open mind. Hell yeah, brother. All right, we're yeah. out of here now. now we hey, need to hear that. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. I'm Evan Britton. And I'm Mike Tyson. And we're out of here, y'all. One. All right. Mm -hmm. That was cool.